every day I've been feasting and I thought, what's one more feast, <laughs> you know? Tomorrow I start going to the gym. You know, it's like actually a little psychotic. <laughs> so what are we thankful for, guys? I hope you enjoyed my little inspirational chat. And welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another mukbang video. Today is another episode of Munching Mondays, which is my mukbang series. On Mondays, we do mukbang videos. Mukbang is an eating show, if you don't know, so we're gonna be eating together and chatting. So if that's something you guys want to see on a regular basis, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel. So today, guys, as you can see, we're in my hallway to the bathroom. We are in the different background. Let me know what you think of this background. I think I really like it because it's really white and it just looks clear. But, I mean, I don't really know. Let me know what you guys think. I'm trying to play around with, you know, where I can film. So, yeah. Anyway, if you guys have seen my H Mart haul video, my Asian grocery store haul video, then you would have seen pretty much everything that's in front of me. Well, most things that's in front of me. I thought I would just eat, taste test the different items for you guys. And I'll let you guys know what I think. I mean, most of these I already know I'm going to like, so... That's that. Okay, so let's just show you what I have. Here I have something hidden. I have some enoki mushrooms. Um, I just like pan fried this because it's been sitting in my fridge for a long time and I thought, okay, we need to eat this. I pan fried this, I added some coconut aminos and that's it, super simple. And for a side dish, I have some pickled radish and also some Korean radish kimchi. It's one of my favorite kimchis. It's so good. So we have that as like a side. And then we have spicy buckwheat noodles. This is the one that I bought from H Mart. And oh my god, I love this stuff. This is cold spicy noodles. Yeah. <laughs> I can't wait to try that one. And then we have some Inari sushi. If you guys have seen some of my previous videos, you've seen that I've been really enjoying Inari sushi. So this is fried tofu skin. And then inside there's a little bit of rice and then I added some seaweed salad on top. I recently did a video where I show you guys different topping options for inari and how to make inari sushi. So check that video out, I'll link it down below. And then for like a dessert, I have here some hot dog. Hot dog is, I'm just gonna, I look like this. It's like a Korean pancake and uh, it's like a Korean street food and it's really, really good. This one is not the traditional kind. The traditional kind has like brown sugar and stuff inside, but this one apparently has taro, which I haven't tried yet, so I'm excited to try it. Let's just dig it. We're just gonna have to start with the noodles. Can't wait. Let's just dig right in. Noodles. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. It's not as like springy, but it's really good. I mean, you really can't go wrong with these types of noodles. I don't think it's the best one I've had in terms of the brand, but I mean, it's yum. It's really not spicy at all, this one. Mmm. Goes well with pickle radish. Mmm. Let's eat some enoki mushrooms. So this one, I mean, I know I'm gonna like enoki mushrooms. Again, cooked with a little bit of um, coconut aminos. I was gonna put some sriracha on top, but I forgot. So let me just dip a little bit of this hot sauce. Mm. I don't know what it is about enoki mushrooms. They are so good. Mm. Mm. All right, now Inari, just a simple topping idea. This is just seaweed salad on top. It's one of my topping ideas for Inari. Mm. 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 
Mm. So guys, I just celebrated my birthday this week. So this literal whole week has been a giant feast. And I thought, I'm just gonna wrap it up with this mukbang and enjoy myself. And then starting tomorrow, it's gonna get real. I'm gonna get back into healthiness and not overeating every single day, but it's been very enjoyable. Okay, I'm just gonna try this. I'm not gonna wait until dessert, okay. Mm. So it smells very like, doesn't smell sweet, it smells, I feel like it's not gonna be very sweet. I can see a little bit of the taro paste, but it's very slight. The dough is a bit greasy as usual. This stuff, lots of grease, okay, lots of grease, especially when you buy it on the streets of Korea. Now, I don't know if it's like, if the ones they sell in Korea are vegan, like the street ones, I doubt it. But yeah, let me just try this. Mmm. Mmm. This is good. Mm. It's like a very thin croissant type of consistency, but it's more, it's less flaky and more doughy. The taro paste is definitely a little sweet, but very mild sweetness. Mm. That's good. Mm. Mm. I don't know if I prefer the brown sugar version or this one, but I can't really taste any taro flavor specifically. If you told me this was like sweet potato, I would believe that. <laughs> it's just kind of like that consistency, slightly sweet, not too sweet. Really good. Mm. So anyways, yeah, every day I've been feasting and I thought, What's one more feast? <laughs> you know. Tomorrow I start going to the gym again. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 Maybe I overcooked these noodles. Almost tastes a little bit mushy in consistency. It's been a while guys, it's been a while. Mm. Oh. Mm. Also this week was Thanksgiving in Canada. Or this week is Thanksgiving. Right now it's Thanksgiving weekend. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna mix some of the enoki mushrooms with these noodles. Mm. 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 So this weekend is Thanksgiving weekend in Canada. For those of you that don't know, Canadians, we celebrate Thanksgiving in October and it's always like around my birthday because I'm born October 7th so yeah I've been feasting on top of feasting on top of feasting so sad because I was on Instagram and I was looking for, I was posting something on stories and I was looking for a sticker to add. I was talking about Thanksgiving and all there were were pictures of turkeys or like a cartoon of a turkey. I'm like, you know what? It's kind of messed up because the whole point, the reason why they have turkeys as the icon for Thanksgiving 
is because people eat turkeys on Thanksgiving, but then they like make all these cartoons of these turkeys, like happy looking turkeys. And I'm like, you know, it's like actually a little psychotic. <laughs> Us as a human race, we are actually quite psychotic. What we do, if you actually, if you actually like look at things from the outside point of view, it's a bit psychotic, you know? It's like the day that you eat turkeys, the symbol is like a cartoon turkey. What? Anyways, I couldn't find a really good, you know, sticker to use because everything was about turkeys and I'm not gonna use a symbol about a turkey because obviously I don't wanna promote eating turkeys. Sometimes I feel like humanity. <laughs> there is no hope. I don't know. Is there hope? <laughs> mm. Mm. So yeah, hopefully there'll be less turkeys eaten this year. It's just so, yeah, it's just crazy to me. And even like the symbol of dairy is like a dairy cow. And it's like <laughs> the amount of torturing and suffering they have to go through. And then they are the icon of this industry. <gasps> I also just watched the David, David Attenborough um, new movie. He has a documentary. I forgot what it's called. I watched it. I watched the first half um, actually focusing and then uh, the second half I was like doing other stuff so I, I need to rewatch it. Mm. I, I especially want to rewatch the part where he talks about sustainable fishing. I feel like there was so much good messaging in that movie, but so many of these environmental movies, they need to really be a little more, how do I say, intense with their wording about animal agriculture and about the extreme environmental impact of animal agriculture. Anyway, yeah. Hmm. But you know, I do applaud the man. I mean, the man is apparently 93 years old, David Attenborough. And I'm like, you know, respect for you to actually care about this earth after you leave it. Obviously, this guy knows he doesn't have that many years left and he's doing like he's literally still working. I was like, oh my god, this guy's 93. I think I read somewhere that he's vegetarian. Let me know. weird that I'm eating dessert in the middle of my meal. I love switching between savory and sweet, salty and sweet. <laughs> mm. And plus, this needs to be eaten warm, you know? Mm -hmm. Anyway, I need to rewatch that documentary film. And um, maybe we'll discuss it on the Savage Podcast. Mm hmm. It's crazy because when 
I first went vegan, or when I was first, you know, introduced to the vegan topic, vegan lifestyle, the environmental thing at that time for me, maybe I, I think I was very ignorant. I didn't think it was like, how do I say? It wasn't at the forefront of why I went vegan. I've talked about this so many times, but like I went vegan for ethical reasons and I didn't really think too much about the environmental reasons, even though now I think it's become a lot more apparent and I'm a lot more aware of this environmental stuff. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe either A, I was ignorant or our world is feeling this urgency a lot more. Because when I was first introduced to veganism, it was like 2011, so almost 10 years ago. I didn't go vegan at that time, but that's when I first started reading about veganism and all that stuff. And I, that's when I went pescatarian at that time. And that was almost 10 years ago. So I do have a feeling that we probably made it a lot worse in the last 10 years because we haven't really made it better. And also we've become a lot more aware of the dangers of this. So yeah, I don't know. I can understand to some extent why people wouldn't pay attention to it because obviously people are just living their lives, right? Most people just get up, go to work, take care of their families, you know, go to bed, whatever, have a few hobbies. They just want to live a simple life. But I don't understand the blatant denial and also the kind of counter arguments against it and why people would believe that climate change is not real. Again, I get when people are not necessarily going to go to the marches and be an activist, even though I think more of us should be doing that, including myself, but I don't understand this crazy amount of denial and skepticism. I mean, I understand it to some degree because I know it's corruption that's pushed this whole uh, idea that climate change is a hoax or that it's a lie. Obviously, a lot of these corporations, they don't want you to know that it is a danger. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put a little sum sum. So yeah, they don't want you to know that it is a danger, but at the same time, it's like, I feel like maybe we're so easily fooled by these corporations. I don't know. Anyway. Last bite of the inari, this time with the noodles and the seaweed salad. Huh. Mm. Mm hmm Anyway. So yeah, what are we gonna do about it guys? Let me know down below, are you more hopeful that the future that you know we can change, we can evolve, we can have better technologies to you know counteract all the damage that we've done or are you more pessimistic about the future? Let me know which one you are. <laughs> I don't know where I am. A part of me is hopeful because obviously we have done so much with technology and a lot of people do have good attentions. But then another part of me is not very hopeful because there's so much corruption and so much just stuff coming from the top um, that I feel like we pretend that we live in this free world where we have control over what happens. You know, we live in a democracy, but do we really live in a democracy where the only choices for the leaders of a country are Donald Trump and Joe Biden? Oh, is that a democracy? I don't know, anyway. If you guys want more political talk, listen to the Savage Podcast. <sighs> mm.
I hopeful? Am I not hopeful? Who knows? COVID got me a bit more pessimistic. <laughs> So one of the things that made the documentary really sad, the David Attenborough, was that the fact that he's 93 and he's obviously been like very, you know, out there in the environment, you know, seeing different types of species and doing all of that stuff. So for him to say like, I've seen basically the destruction of this planet and wildlife in my lifetime, in one lifetime, I mean, that is scary. And species have been completely wiped out before on this planet. So, if we're doing this crazy amount of environmental damage, how do we know what's gonna happen, you know? And how do we fight against it? If anyone has a solution, <laughs> let me know below. I mean, I think it's great, veganism is growing, but the more and more I delve into this whole topic, the more and more I realize that veganism is just one little thing. <laughs> there is so much more to this than veganism because veganism is part of this whole crazy, you know, system that we have. And animal agriculture really is just a result of the extreme capitalist system that we have. So until we fix the root cause of this problem, I don't know, can we fix everything? I don't know. I think we can definitely start with veganism for sure. And that's step one. You can't completely overturn an entire system overnight. And so step one, try to change things within the system whilst still being aware that there are other things that need changing. And the system itself might be at fault. <laughs> mm. This is so good. But anyway, it's supposed to be Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving when you're watching this, I realize. Because I'll be posting this tomorrow. Mm. So what are we thankful for, guys? You know, I think I said this on the podcast, but I used to be like, I feel like ever since I was young, I never wanted to get older because I don't know why. I just like never really wanted to get older. Pretty sure I freaked out when I turned 13 or something like that. So I never was like the type to be like, oh, I wanna grow up fast or anything like that. So every year that I turn one year older, I'm like, you know, not happy about it. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh, I'm getting old. But this year, but this year I decided to embrace it. Yes, guys, I'm embracing my age, which is 32. It's gonna be okay. Okay, here's the thing. I feel like um, talking about all of the wrong that's in this world and all of the crazy stuff that's going on right now, I think it puts things into perspective because so many people have suffered and died as a result of this virus and all these things. And I think I decided to be thankful for turning 32 because not everybody gets that chance to turn 32. There are a lot of people that die young and we cry and it's a tragedy when somebody dies young. So we should celebrate when we get one year older because not everyone gets to turn 32. Not everyone gets to turn 40 or 50 or 60, so on and so forth. So yes, guys, so I don't know, maybe you're turning a little bit older, maybe you're feeling down a little bit and that's normal, guys. I also feel like that um, pretty much every year, except this year because I changed my mindset, I decided to just like fully embrace it. You know what they say, 30 is the new 20? <laughs> Why can't I say it? 30 is the new 20, that is what they say. Just, you know, 30 is great, 30 is fantastic. There was a time when human beings didn't even live till 30, okay? It was just a simple mindset shift, changing the idea in your head that it's bad to get older because, again, it's a tragedy when somebody dies young 
because they didn't get a chance to get older. So why wouldn't it be a celebration for somebody to continuously get older? Yes, it sucks because we do have a finite time on this planet, but at the same time, you know, I think it's a tragedy when somebody dies young. And so we should celebrate when we are still lucky enough to be here. And that is how I will end this video. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my little inspirational chat at the end there. We started off talking about the horribleness of this world and then we ended on a positive, inspirational note. Did you enjoy it? Did ya? I hope so. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching, guys. Happy Thanksgiving to all of my fellow Canadians. I hope you have an amazing time. I hope you leave those turkeys alone and have some delicious vegan meals. I hope you have the best time ever with your friends and family. I'll link some recipes down below. Uh, if you want to make some delicious Thanksgiving meals, even if you're not celebrating Thanksgiving, these are really, really awesome for the fall as well. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and of course, give this video a big thumbs up. Thank you so much once again for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!